I am Brian, the Motley Mix Merchant. Thank you very much for dropping by. Things look a little bit different on this episode because I'm trying something different with my camera. Had a little bit of a technical issue last night. This is take two of this episode. So we'll see how this one works out. I apologize in advance for any issues we may have with drop-offs and having to edit some things out. And I can already tell that this focus is going to be a little different, a little touchy maybe when I'm holding things up in front of us. But hopefully we'll get through this a little smoother than I did last night. And I just realized, man, do I ever need a haircut? I'm sure a lot of us do right now. Um, how's everybody doing? I, it's been a pretty good week. Sold six items in the past five days since I've seen you last. Uh, we'll run through those. I'm going to take a look at a very, very small Facebook marketplace haul that I picked up, porch pickup with uh, cash in an envelope uh, dropped off in the mailbox. But I got to keep thrifting and got to keep sourcing. I don't thrift much anymore, but I got to keep sourcing because I'm starting to run out of things to list. Um, really getting down there on the things that I already have in the house. So I got to keep getting some stuff. And I just ordered something off of eBay tonight. It is a lot of about 30 various glass and ceramic items. I'm going to be picking it up in Toronto tomorrow when I go to do a shipping run for the stuff that I sold this weekend. And so we're going to do a live unboxing uh, probably Wednesday night. And I'll let you know the details on that on the Facebook page and on Instagram and hopefully in the Thrifters and Pickers group as well. So I'm going to run down what's sold. I'm going to look through this little bit of a small haul that I had. And then I'm going to do a very, very brief primer for you on Blue Mountain Pottery. I am not an expert. I never will uh, attest to being an expert in Blue Mountain Pottery, but I've had quite a bit of Blue Mountain Pottery go through my hands in the past nine months. And so I just want to pass on a little, uh, some tidbits of information in case you happen to see it in the wild or on a uh, auction or something like that. You may be interested in picking it up because I think it's beautiful and it's making a little bit of comeback. I'll take a talk about that when we get to it. But first, let's take a quick look at what did sell on eBay in the past uh, five days or so. I'm going to move over a bit because of the, because of the way things are these days uh, with this setup. And I move over. Hopefully, it won't cut off too much of my head when I put up the sold listings there. Um, starting off with something that a couple things just sold uh, this evening, earlier on today. So I packed them up this evening and uh, they're all ready to go. Uh, sold this uh, set of five Ainsley tea saucers. No teacups involved, but there are some beautiful saucers and uh, somebody picked them up for $15 with free shipping. They're only gonna cost me about $10 to ship Canadian. Um, so maybe $10 profit on those. Again, those are in a box lot that I picked up for $2 way back in September, October last year. So I'm not too worried about the cost on them. $10 profit, I'll take that on small stuff anytime. One of the Mary Mushroom, although it's not officially Sears Mary Mushroom, one of the Mushroom Soup terrines sold. Uh, sold that for $12.99 with another $12.99 for the shipping. And surprisingly enough, as big as the box is and six pounds plus to ship it, it's not very expensive. It's only costing me about $15 Canadian to ship. So, you know, that's not bad. That, that soup terrine probably cost me less than a dollar with all the mushroom stuff that I got on that table for a grand total of $6 US. So maybe 75 cents max for that soup terrine and off it goes, it's sold. I hope it finds a new home and they enjoy it. So a Star Starbucks canister, probably one of the very first things that I picked up at a Goodwill in, in the central area of St. Catharines. Um, when I first started thrifting for resale, I've had this Starbucks canister in my store for seven months now at least. I didn't get a very big price for it, but uh, it didn't cost much to ship. So I'll make maybe $8 profit on this one. Not too much, but you know what? It's off the shelves and good to see things still moving a little bit in the store as we go through these crazy times right now. Very nice little piece here. It is a, a burl root uh, basket with uh, carved handles. It, it, uh, beautiful wood carving, of course, made from an entire root ball. And uh, that's how it gets the name of a burl root. I don't know what kind of a tree it's from, though. Uh, but nice little piece on its way to Georgia, I think. Georgia or South Carolina, one of the two. Uh, but yeah, good, good piece there and a uh, good price for it, too. And again, in a box cost me less than a dollar. Very nice little piece here, this Rosenthal twisted and stacked glass crystal uh, mini vase. Some people are selling them as drinking glasses. Not 
quite sure it would be a drinking glass because of the way it's twisted. But uh, somebody bought it as a mini vase and off it went. Just a small thing, only about three inches tall. Uh, but it was beautiful and it's crystal, had the sticker on it still. So that one's been in the store probably for six months as well. So a lot of things that have been in the store for a little bit longer are selling this week. And last but not least, sold a DVD, but for a pretty good price. Um, hard to find DVD apparently. It's a movie called Dogma, Ben Affleck and a whole bunch of other big superstars from uh, before they were super, super big superstars. Um, sold for $16.99 plus another $4 for the shipping. So over $20 for that DVD. D used DVDs don't usually go for that much. So it's obviously a very um, hard to find piece and it's on its way to its new home. And that's it. That's the six things that I've sold since the last time we spoke. And uh, I'm just on pace right now. What's today? Today is the 13th of April. I've sold 12 items so far this month. It definitely slowed down in the past week after last weekend. My momentum from February and March has not carried over immensely into April at least. Uh, it's still a little quieter this month. Maybe people are starting to realize they need to save their money. But you know what? Th two things this weekend and something else from Friday. So that helped the numbers a little bit. I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take still one item per day on average and we'll see how things go for the next week. So yeah, not too bad. Happy with it. We'll see how it goes from there. Okay, so let's take a look now at um, a small haul that I picked up off of Facebook Marketplace. What I did was I flipped some money. I sold, I think I told you about this last video, I sold uh, three big boxes full of dried flowers. They were everlasting flowers or straw flowers, whatever the name is that you use in your area. Uh, but somebody paid me $15 for those. I turned around, didn't even open the baggie that the money was in and turned around and spent that $15 on a small lot of uh, ceramics from Facebook Marketplace. Unfortunately, I didn't see the ad till it had already been up for about a week and a half, and she had some really, really nice things in the pictures. She was selling off items from uh, what she said was her mother's store, and there were price stickers on them from a store. But uh, unfortunately, it had been picked over fairly well before I even saw the ad on Facebook. But I was able to get five pieces, a uh, grand total of $13, but I gave her 15 in this day and age. I'm not going to worry about waiting for change and being handed change and that kind of thing. So uh, porch pickup, she had the box out front of the door and I dropped the money in the mailbox and never even saw her and away we went. So here's the five things that I got. And let me start with this. This is cute. This is a hand painted slab of slate rock. It is as you can see on the back, probably from the Canadian Shield here in central, central Ontario of Canada. Uh, but a beautiful scene there with the ducks slash geese, I, I don't know, <laughs> and the lake scene, which definitely signifies to me that it's from central Ontario because that's cottage country up there. Uh, but that's the kind of thing you'd see on the edge of the wainscoting around a cottage somewhere. That This would be leaning up against the wall and just a little piece of decoration for the cottage. So. Um, that was one of the five things I picked up. So with the five, $15 I paid for the five items, that's $3 per item, a little higher than my usual price, but I need stuff to sell. So I'm paying for a little bit more for it and, and uh, it's okay. That'll probably be a $15 item. If I can turn all $3 items into $15 or $20 items, that, that's great. 15 into 100, perfectly fine. Uh, up next, I'll try not to clank this into the microphone too much. There it goes, sorry. <laughs> Beautiful, hand-painted soup terrain. You can see the handle's a little better. I'm gonna take the lid off, there we go. <laughs> nice soup terrain with the lid, hand-painted lid. Um, you can see there, it says Heidi. She is the artist, obviously, signed on the top of the lid, but beautiful painting with the speckled cream color and the uh, beige colored uh, edging around it and the flower motif, it was, it's very pretty. And that's probably a good $20 item. It's a large, not really a soup tureen, it's more of a, um, a vegetable serving dish, that kind of thing. Unfortunately, it does have a tiny little dint in the very, very tip of the lid, but nothing very major. I'm still gonna think it's gonna be a $20 item when I get around to listing it and selling it. I'm going to be careful here because I'm working with not the same, not the, not the right table over here. Sorry. So I don't want things to go crashing down. Up next, this is gorgeous. 
it is a beautiful, beautiful vase. I guess it'd be, what's the name for it? What's a, it's a, a spittoon shape, but it's not a spittoon, it's ceramic. Um, but it's beautiful hand decoration. That beautiful, I don't know what that animal is, maybe an antelope, gazelle, that kind of thing. Put the flower finishing all the way around, and then there is a butterfly slash, I don't know, hummingbird, maybe? No, butterfly, I'm pretty sure it's a butterfly. Um, but yeah, it's gorgeous. And there's the, looking at the top, and there's the top there, the finished work there, but it's beautifully done. Handmade, hand-painted, no maker's marks. So, uh, but it's a gorgeous piece. And I'm gonna do a little bit of research to see if I can narrow down where it came from, maybe. I'm pretty sure it is an artist in Ontario here, um, because most of, all five of the items are from Canada and from Canadian pottery makers. So um, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a Canadian piece as well, but absolutely cute. And I'm hoping that's probably a little more, 25 to 30 for that one um, would be my guess. So um, yeah, I like that piece. I like that piece a lot. Last two items are related. Uh, they are both from the same company. And here they are. They are Blue Mountain Pottery, vases, green, and Harvest Gold. Drip glaze, the famous drip glaze that Blue Mountain Pottery is known for worldwide. Um, I have got another one of these in the green and black that I've currently got on my eBay store. This small one, I think what I'm going to do is maybe combine this small one with the other green one that I'm already trying to sell, put them together in a lot and sell them together. This one alone should sell for $15 to $20. Um, the Harvest Gold coloring is absolutely beautiful and people like it uh, the green is eh, not so popular but any of the off colors that blue mountain pottery made uh, definitely popular especially this harvest gold so that would be gorgeous no matter what kind of decorating scheme you're using mid-century modern or classic or whatever that's that's a gorgeous piece that would be absolutely beautiful sitting on somebody's shelf so um, those two together so all five of those fifteen dollars $13 with a $2 tip. Um, and again, I will hope to get approximately $100 total for all of those. So maybe a little more than my average cost per item, but yeah, you know what? You do what you have to do to get things to sell these days. So uh, that's it. And uh, as I mentioned, I have a pickup to do tomorrow in Toronto. Uh, I'm going to go do a shipping run and then just head right into town, town, right into the city. <laughs> and uh, uh, do another porch pickup already paid through ebay um, it was an ebay buy but they had a a large lot probably 20 items for sale in one lot um, some ceramics and glassware that i picked up it was i want to say 39 dollars canadian um, so free shipping now because i'm doing the pickup he's going to charge no shipping at all so that'll be great lowers my cost per item especially uh, so yeah, I'll pick that up and we'll do a live unboxing of that later on this week. Uh, something else going on with the channel tomorrow night, hopefully, if all works well, technically speaking. And um, that'll be on the channel as well before the end of the week as well. So lots of things happening here on the Motley Mix Merchant channel. And I'm glad you're here along for the ride. By the way, if you'd like to follow along with the entire ride, you can hit the subscribe button down below. And you can then hit the bell to be notified every time a new episode is uploaded. Because that would be great to have you along on this journey with me and you can learn from my mistakes and my successes and learn something new about some of these items as I learn new things about the items at the same time. So um, do that if you will. I would love to have you along. Now, last portion of this video, something I've been talking about doing for a little while now, um, a little primer on Blue Mountain Pottery. Now, as I mentioned, I am not an expert. I do not profess to be an expert at all in Blue Mountain Pottery. I'm going to give you a resource right now and I will put it down in the description below if you want to click on it after the video is over. It is the Blue Mountain Pottery Collectors Club, bmpcc.com. I think it's com, maybe ca. I'll put the right link down in the description below. It's either .ca or .com, but it's bmpcc collectors club. So uh, they've got a great resource page there. If you're ever interested in seeing some of the older pieces or getting a, a deeper delve into the history of Blue Mountain Pottery. And the reason I wanted to do it now 
is because it seems to be having a little bit of an uptick in popularity, just a little bit of an uptick in popularity. Um, when I sold some of this Blue Mountain Pottery stuff back before Christmas, last October, November, I had things listed. Um, if you've been a member of the, uh, a subscriber to this channel for very long, you know that I've sold probably six different items of Blue Mountain Pottery here on my store in the last six months or so. Um, I sold three lots of miniature animals. Um, they were very, very cute collections. I had five animals in each lot and there was deers and dogs and bears and owls and squirrels and other combinations of animals in those lots. And I've also sold a great big, recently, uh, the lady that bought four vases from me all at once um, out in Washington State, she bought one of the big, tall, skinny neck ewers and uh, it was a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. And um, I, you know, another Blue Mountain piece. And I, I, I love Blue Mountain pottery. I had it in my house when I was a kid. My mother enjoyed it as well. She had a few pieces. And that's how long it's been around. Um, not saying how old I am, but when I was a kid, I had Blue Mountain pottery in my house because my mom loved the stuff. Um, and it's just sort of stuck with me. But it is starting to get a little bit of extra uh, kick right now. And, and the reason I know that, not just from just my own experience, but Looking at the solds on eBay these days, when I was selling this stuff back before Christmas time, October, November, the sell through rate was about 10%. So if there were 300 listings on eBay, 30 items had sold in the last 90 days. Well, right now, that number is ticked up and it's about 18, 19%. So almost double the numbers of sold items when it comes to Blue Mountain Pottery. So maybe just a little bit of a uptick in the popularity and, and, and I, 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 I love this stuff. Uh, somebody on the Thrifters and Pickers group showed their uh, a box full of Blue Mountain pottery that they had unboxed um, when they were cleaning out their basement and they had, she had some great, great items in there. Um, so let's get on with a little quick primer on Blue Mountain pottery. As for how it began, Blue Mountain pottery actually began as part of a gift shop at Blue Mountain. Blue Mountain is, was back in the day, back in the 50s, and still is to this day, an operating ski hill resort in central Ontario, Canada, near a town called Collingwood. Uh, it was begun by a gentleman by the name of Jozo Weeder. He was a Czechoslovakian immigrant, started up the ski hill, and he wanted to add a little bit of a revenue stream, so he started a gift shop, and part of that gift shop was a pottery making operation. And he brought over a fellow countryman from Czechoslovakia by the name of Dennis Tupi. T-U-P-Y is Dennis's last name. He was a European trained potter. He was very experienced and, and knew what he was doing. And he began making what you see now as the famous drip glaze pottery pieces. Uh, came up with some, uh, his, his own set of molds and then and put his uh, own personal touch on the uh, special drip glaze that he, that the, Blue Mountain Pottery is now famous for, and it became popular very, very quickly. And Mr. Tupi stayed with the company for about eight years, from 1952 to 1960. And then he left Blue Mountain Pottery, and he went on to create his own company called Canadian Ceramic Craft Pottery. So what you'll find with Blue Mountain Pottery is there are guaranteed Blue Mountain Pottery pieces. I'll show you this. This is the one that I just got this week. There's the stamp. That is a certified Blue Mountain Pottery stamp. The three triangles in the middle are actually evergreen trees. They've got stems on them and stumps on them and the word Canada is underneath them. So that is a Blue Mountain Pottery stamp. But what happened is after Mr. Tupi left and then along the next 20 years or so before the company folded, some of the mold makers and the artisans from the Blue Mountain Pottery shop left and created their own companies. So you would have pieces that look like this, that's Blue Mountain Pottery, and then you would have other pieces that have the black and green drip glaze, that's not Blue Mountain Pottery. And they weren't technically ripping off Blue Mountain Pottery because they used to work there and they're just replicating the same style at the new company that they formed themselves because they saw how popular this stuff was in the 60s and 70s. Um, in Canada, the Northern United States, over in Europe and even in the Caribbean islands, apparently Blue Mountain Pottery was very, very big. So uh, what I wanna do is show you a few examples of pieces that I still own um, and I'm trying to sell uh, that are Blue Mountain Pottery. 
and then a couple of examples of things that are not Blue Mountain Pottery, and we'll take a look at the difference. So anyway, I've got, this is the one I just got, and then there's this one as well. So you can see it's the exact same mold, but then they just changed up the glaze coloring. The green and the black is what Blue Mountain Pottery is famous for. I would say 70% of all the Blue Mountain Pottery, maybe even 80% that you see on eBay or in the wild is this beautiful green and black finish. They did, however, do colors. They were into blues, yellows, and reds were the three most popular uh, blue and pottery off colors, besides the green and black. And but that's isn't that finish gorgeous? That is absolutely stunning. And that's the kind of work that they did. And they did all kinds of things besides vases. They were very famous for um, fig animal figurines. They did a whole range of animals in large sizes and small sizes. One of the most famous pieces from Blue Mountain Pottery is an angelfish, really different sizes, but the big, big ones are about a foot across and a foot tall, great big flat angelfish, and they're super popular and super expensive. If you can find them in the wild right now, you, they're very hard to come by. People keep those, they don't really sell them very often. Um, but they also made other kinds of things, ashtrays back in the day. This is a conch shell trinket dish as you can see it could also be an ashtray it's got it's kind of deep though to be an ashtray but you can see that i remember having this on my in one of my mom's curio cabinets when i was a kid so 50 years ago these were in her house and so uh, i thought that was cute when i saw that one in the wild and picked it up for a couple of bucks at the thrift store i, I distinctly remember having one of these in my house when i was a kid so i thought that was pretty cool um uh, what else do we have? Oh, animals. Let me show you some of the animals I still have in my possession. Actually, animals that I found accidentally when I was going through things to try and find some examples for you for this episode. And now I have to list them if I want to sell them. Here's a cute little guy, a squirrel holding a nut. And you can see the drip glaze there. And again, you can tell with the ones that aren't actual Blue Mountain Pottery, the drip glaze doesn't uh, drip quite as evenly. But this one is absolutely stunning. There's no mark on the bottom of this one. Um, so you can't officially say that it is guaranteed to be Blue Mountain Pottery, but that's Blue Mountain Pottery. That's, that's for sure the style of Blue Mountain Pottery right there. And then there's this guy, an owl. Uh, I, think it, I think there was an owl in each of the sets that I've already sold. So I'm going to put him together with the squirrel and one other small piece that I found. Can't remember what it was. Maybe a deer. I think it might have been deer. And uh, that's that's. Uh, let me show you. There's a different mark here. Here it is. This is the one I was going to show you. This one has BMP on the bottom. So not not only did they use the three trees with Canada as the maker's mark, but they also sometimes etched BMP on the bottom, and that is how they marked the pottery. So what you'll find though is for the people that left Blue Mountain Pottery and started up their own companies. It's the same style of pottery. Here's a beautiful piece here. I've got two of these. So it's a matching pair of short candlestick holders. Again, with the red glaze, drip glaze finish, but it's not Blue Mountain Pottery. It is Canadiana Pottery Limited, which was a company that was formed by somebody who used to work for Blue Mountain Pottery. So he just carried over the style and made his own molds and used the same drip glaze style that they used to use at Blue Mountain Pottery, and he started using it and selling it on his stuff over at Canadiana Pottery. So there's a lot of them. I, I want to say there's about 10 to 15 other companies that copied or replicated, did not rip off, but they replicated the Blue Mountain Pottery style because of how popular it was in the 60s and 70s. So you'll see all kinds of Blue Mountain Pottery wannabes, and some of them, are, and they're gorgeous. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not knocking this at all this is these are gorgeous pieces and there's some animals that i've already seen in the wild and um sold that were absolutely gorgeous um this one here is cute too i think this one is blue mountain pottery pretty sure it is it's a nice red bear um with the drip glaze no markings on the bottom but it does have a spot there for a missing sticker and there was blue mountain pottery store stickers that were about that shape and that size so i think this might probably is a Blue Mountain Pottery piece. And again, part of the giveaway is how evenly that red drip glaze is on there. See that? 
So now, to show, after showing you that and, and the, good color, the good pieces, there's also pieces like this that you have to be on the lookout for. This is a duck, obviously, but an attempt was made to do a drip glaze on this one. Unfortunately, it didn't go out very well, did it? Not a lot of red, mostly black, not very even, not very bright. And also, another giveaway on the bottom, if we pull away the felt, it is white chalkware on the inside, as opposed to the brown clay that was taken right from the base of Blue Mountain, right, exact, right from where the Blue Mountain Pottery and the Blue Mountain Ski Resort was located. They used the clay right from the mountain right there to make the pottery, and they still did all the way up until they closed in the 80s. So uh, this, unfortunately, is not one. Um, I don't think I'm even trying to sell this one anymore. It's just going to go on the yard sale box for next year, probably worth about 50 cents in the yard sale. So anyhow, that's just a real quick primer on what to look for if you're looking at Blue Mountain Pottery. It is, uh, you know, it was super, super popular in the 60s and 70s. So the uh, pottery itself closed down in the 80s, I do believe. I think it got rebirthed by somebody else in the 80s and then it closed down again for good. Um, back at around the 2000, in, in, in around the year 2000 or so. But I like it. I, I, I'm an unabashed fan of Blue Mountain Pottery. I don't understand. I know just things are changing and people don't like trinkets and things on their shelves and that kind of stuff. Don't quite understand why Blue Mountain is not as popular as it could be. Um, We'll see. Maybe, it, maybe this comeback is the beginning of a comeback, a really big comeback for Blue Mountain Pottery. Who knows? But yeah, it's definitely definitely twice as many sold items in the past 90 days compared to the 90 days back before Christmas. So who knows? Maybe just people are having a chance to check it out more because they're at home so much and on the computer so much these days. I know I am. That's for sure. Anyhow, that's going to be it for this episode. It's a busy week here at the Motley Mix Merchant household as far as episodes and YouTube videos and listing and selling and shipping and I'm only going out of the house to do my shipping the one time I'll be going uh, I don't know if I've told you exactly what I do for the shipping I, I purchase all my labels online tape them right to the boxes drive to Toronto the back warehouse the back loading dock of the chit chats warehouse is open the rest of the uh, operation is closed except for that back uh, door at the shipping bo shipping docks and you just walk up and throw your stuff on the shipping dock and push it in a little bit so it doesn't fall off the edge and you walk away and then as you're pulling away somebody usually walks up and grabs your stuff and takes it in and scans it and gets it moving to your destination so no contact at all with people definitely being social distanced as far as uh, my shipping is concerned so I'm driving an hour there and an hour back in basically two minutes at the location to actually ship my stuff to the United States. So tomorrow I'll just do my shipping. I'm gonna go do the porch pickup for the eBay purchase that I made. And then it's back home and we will unbox the eBay lot together uh, Wednesday night. We'll do a live Wednesday nighter, probably eight o'clock or so, 8.15 on Wednesday night. We'll do a live unboxing of my eBay lot purchase. I hope everybody is doing well and staying well and staying healthy and staying isolated as much as you can. The numbers are all over the place. One day they're good, one day they're bad. So we'll see how much longer this goes. I fully expect I will not be returning to my full-time job until at least June. And I suspect that most of North America is going to be in the same boat. So in the meantime, I hope you are doing well with your selling if you're continuing to sell. And if you're finding a source for your things other than your profit piles, good for you. Keep on doing it as long as you can. That's it for this episode. I will see you again very soon right here on another episode of MQ. Cheers, everybody. Music